Um, thank you, everyone. Um, most of you know that um, a referendum to repeal the Eighth Amendment is due to take place this summer. And uh, today I would like to share my story of uh, my crisis pregnancy and how the Eighth Amendment helped me. Um, as a young girl, um, I always imagined that the day I would find out that I was pregnant um, would be the happiest day of my life. Um, I had it all planned in my head. Um, I'd be married, uh, have a steady job, my own house, and be financially stable. Uh, the day that I did find out that I was pregnant um, was the exact opposite. I was 23. I had just graduated from uh, my English master's and I was waiting to see if I would get into the Masters of Education so I could fulfill my lifelong dream of being a secondary school teacher. I was single, uh, carefree, uh, working part-time in retail just to get by and still living in my family home. Um, as I stared down at my positive pregnancy test, I felt like I was just in a nightmare. Um, everything that I had worked so hard to achieve uh, just felt completely worthless now. Um, I couldn't breathe. Um, I could just feel these waves of panic, um, just from my feet all the way to my head. Um, and I immediately called a close friend so that I could have somebody to confide in and somebody to, to share this burden with. Um, and I called my friend. Um, they asked me what I was going to do. I knew about the Eighth Amendment and I knew that it meant the life of the baby was equal to the life of the mother and that um, abortion was illegal in Ireland and that if I wanted to terminate my pregnancy, I couldn't in Ireland. Um, I'd always considered myself pro-life because I'd seen images of abortion in a science class in my junior cert and um, so I was, I was educated on it. Um, but now that I was on this side of things, it was much more difficult than I could ever, ever imagine. Um, however, when my friend asked me what I was going to do, um, and that it was my choice, I knew in my heart that there was no choice to be made. I now shared my body with another human being whose right to life was just as equal as my own invalid as my own. So there was no decision to be made in regard to ending my baby's life, only what would happen during his life. Um, and as this was an unplanned pregnancy, I knew that I had to decide whether I would raise this baby myself or let another family raise him. After some research online, I knew deep in my heart that I wouldn't be able to go through with adoption, but that it was always an option. If I needed to. Everything will be okay was the first thing that my mother said to me when I told her I was pregnant. And I often think about all the girls out there who don't have someone to tell them that everything will be okay. And my mother's uh, first reaction to my pregnancy was extremely important. I'm sure that she was feeling just as scared as I was, but because she held everything together and told me that everything was going to be okay and reassured me, it really, really helped me. Our initial reaction, reactions to unplanned pregnancies mean everything. During my uh, first scan at 10 weeks, the midwife smiled and said, oh, what an active little baby. Um, she didn't say what an active little bunch of cells or what an active uh, fetus. Um, yet, if I hadn't lived in Ireland, I could have legally taken an abortion pill and just ended the life of this active little baby. We all know yet that there is a referendum coming up which seeks to allow abortions in Ireland without restrictions up to 12 weeks. At 10 weeks, my baby had a fully developed heart which was beating three times faster than mine. He had tiny fingers with nails and his arms and legs could rotate at the shoulder and hip joints. 
uh, the muscles in his tummy were taking shape. He may have been small, but he was very active, kicking his new limbs. I've been asked if it was uh, difficult deciding what I, was, what I would do when I found out I was pregnant. Um, but because I knew what would happen during an abortion, um, it wasn't difficult deciding. However, it was extremely difficult accepting that I was going to be a mother and that I was going to have a baby. And my pregnancy was extremely um, strenuous emotionally. I had so many worries about what the future would bring and how I'd cope as a single mother. I cried myself to sleep most nights because I felt that I wasn't ready to be a mom. And sometimes I think about those many, many moments when I was feeling emotional and vulnerable. And I'm so thankful that the Eighth Amendment was there to protect me from making a quick and wrong decision when I was feeling my worst. I often think that if I had local access to abortion when I was feeling so down during those months, I could have easily made a decision that I would have regretted later. Uh, I often had suicidal thoughts during my pregnancy and during the first few weeks um, and months, um, my family encouraged me to go and speak to somebody in a crisis pregnancy center to help me deal with it, um, but I was so scared that I was going to be judged and I just found my pregnancy extremely difficult to talk about. And looking back now, I do regret not speaking to somebody. Um, I reached out to my maternity hospital seven months into my pregnancy when I was feeling just my worst and um, I did speak to somebody there and I, um, I had a lot of feelings, you know, building up inside and um, I would encourage people, um, to, if they are feeling like that, um, to, to speak to somebody. Uh, being pregnant was a very, very lonely time for me. And it was, it was especially difficult seeing other mothers at the hospital, um, appointments with their partners. And although I had my family support, it wasn't the same as having the support of a partner. On the 27th of October 2015 at uh, 6.20, my gorgeous little baby boy Rasa was born, um, nine pounds two. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you've probably seen me running around after him. Um, he's very, very lively. <laughs> but um, people talk about um, this swoosh of love that you're supposed to feel when, um, when you have your baby. Um, but I didn't feel this love um, immediately. And um, I just, I think it's important to say that. Um, it wasn't until the middle of the night uh, when my mother had left and the nurses were all gone. Um, and it was just really quiet and I was just nursing him and then I just looked down and I just was overcome with this sense of just this joy and love. And I looked down at him and just all my fears were completely gone. Um, he was so perfect and I just, I knew that I loved him so much and I wanted to sacrifice all the things that I thought I wanted before um, so that he could have a, a good life. Um, but Rasa has transformed my life in every way. Um, I'm just such a better person because of the love that I feel for him. Um, he brought such a wonderful um, happiness and just a true healing to my heart. Um, and so many doors and opportunities have opened because of his life. And um, I'm now exploring you know, career options that I never thought of before him. And I've made so many really good friends. And I've also lost touch with all the bad friends, which is great. Um, but he's brought such joy to my life. But he has also brought such joy to my family's life. Um, my parents and grandparents and my uh, 
to sisters and brother. Um, but without the Eighth Amendment, n- not only might the life of my child been ended, but somebody's grandchild and somebody's great-grandchild, you know, somebody's nephew as well might have lost life. Um, I'm the sole provider and carer for Rasa, and although being a lone parent has its difficulties, it's extremely rewarding. My life just has a total new meaning now, and honestly, I can say that I am a happier person now than um, I was before my, uh, my unplanned pregnancy. Um, but like any journey into motherhood, uh, mine definitely has its ups and downs, and I can't, you know, sugarcoat it and say that just because I made this pro-life choice that it's easy, um, because it's not. It can be really, really tough, um, and I often I feel like I'm struggling, but I know at the end of the day that it is worth it, and that I can get through anything that life throws in my way, um, because nothing is harder than dealing with um, the crisis pregnancy. I'm truly blessed to have such a supportive family um, and they help me with Ross a lot and I'm really grateful. But I know that so many lone parents out there um, don't have this support. We need to work together to ensure that every parent has a support system. We need to change our attitudes towards crisis pregnancies these women need to be shown compassion. When I told my friends that I was pregnant, um, most of them um, didn't say, oh, congratulations, you know, the the normal reaction. They'll say, um, instead they said things like, oh, what are you going to do? Um, But we, you know, we need to stop gossiping about you know, people's pregnancies and we need to show support instead. Uh, we need to create a welcoming and non-judgmental society for mothers and also for fathers. I know that I'm truly blessed to you know, have such a wonderful and supportive family and I, um, I also have my, my faith to, to, turn, to turn to when I was um, experiencing a uh, crisis. Um, I know I'm blessed to have that. Um, Being a mother is just such a wonderful uh, gift from God. Um, But there are so many women out there who aren't open to God's grace. I decided to share my story for those women who, unlike me, they don't have someone there to tell them that everything will be okay and that you can do this and that you don't need to end the life of your baby. Yes, my life has changed greatly um, since becoming a mother, but it hasn't stopped. Rasa does not hold me back. If anything, he's a reason to to better myself. I've done uh, two courses since Rasa was born, and I'm hoping to do a diploma in youth ministry next September. And, you know, so just life, life does go on. Um, I want women who may be in a similar situation to know that you don't have to end the life of your baby in order to get through the darkness and back towards the life, the light. Um, I want people to really understand how important that the the Eighth Amendment is. It's just like it's... It's just such a credit to the people of Ireland. And the reason that I um, got involved with, you know, the, um, love both and that is um, I just really wanted to show, show other women that, you know, you can do this. And it's very hard and it's very scary, you know, even standing up here and, and talking to you and, you know, sort of putting myself out there. Um, but, I, you know, I have to just think about the, the greater good and... Um, you know, the, the women whose hearts, you know, I may touch. Um, yeah, so we, we all know that we are facing a huge battle over the next few months uh, leading up to the referendum. And I just encourage everybody here today to please get involved. 
um, whether it, it's leafleting or canvassing, sharing posts on social media, I just would like encourage you, just don't be afraid of, of any backlash that you may get from uh, the repeal side. We have to stand up and protect the Eighth Amendment. Um, please come and visit the Love Boat booths inside um, if you haven't already and um, sign up. And um, just please continue to pray also for the protection of the unborn. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much.